my beloved, uh, our text this morning, uh, in the final uh, part of this series, is that he himself, talking about God, he himself is perfect. The last perfection of God, he himself is perfect. Amen? Now, before we, uh, we attempt to, thank you, Esther, before we uh, attempt to understand our text today, we must conclude that humanity is not perfect. Talk to me. We live in an imperfect and a corrupt world. Now, the perfection uh, referred to in our text is not a philosophical perfection. It is not a moralistic perfection. You're not going to be uh, perfect philosophically because you have such lofty thoughts. Amen. You're not going to be perfect because you believe that you're morally correct or morally perfect. There are many people in the world today uh, attempting to attain perfection. Can I work in here? But they all fail. Got some young folks in here listening. I want them to hear this good. Because you can try to do everything right and still be wrong and still fail. Amen? Uh, many religions teach that they can help their followers uh, reach nirvana. State of perfection. Huh? Buddhism and Hinduism uh, teach that they can help you reach nirvana or the state of perfection. Amen. But they all fail. Now, humanity has never been perfect as long as it remains, and it will never be perfect as long as it remains in this world. Amen. And as long as it does not acknowledge Jehovah as God. You never reach perfection. I don't care how hard you try. I don't care what you do. Never reach it. Amen. Uh, not only that, but we must understand uh, that today Satan is the God of this world. Let me say it again. Satan is the God of this world, and the Bible also says that he's the prince of this world. Mm -hmm. So you got two for one. Huh? That's why you got to be careful who you think you serve. Hmm? Because you, you do know that Satan can imitate, don't you? All right. Huh? Yeah, he, yeah, he can imitate. Amen. But he can never duplicate. Mm. Amen? So today he is the God of this world. Now, you'll find that in 2 Corinthians 4 and 4 and John 14 and 30. Now, Jesus in our text uh, sets the unattainable standard when he says in uh, our Lord's gospel, uh, be ye therefore perfect even as your Father in heaven is perfect. Jesus, and I believe it's in red, but Jesus sets an unattainable standard uh, it is unattainable because God would not lower his standard without compromising his perfection. I'm here to tell you, God will not and does not lower his standards. Mm. Hmm? You go ahead and keep going to, the, to, to a weak, unbible teaching church if you want to. But I stop by to tell you, God will never lower his standards. Amen? Right. And he's not ever going to compromise his perfection. He's always going to be God, and he's always going to be perfect. Amen? amen? So uh, God is perfect, amen, and he could not set an imperfect standard. Hmm? God sets the standard, and that standard cannot be an imperfect standard, amen? Uh, not, not only that, but it's not an imperfect standard of righteousness uh, and perfection by allowing other folks hmm, to define his perfection. God does not need me, you, the president, or nobody else to define his perfection. All right. Do you hear me, somebody? He does not need bishop so-and-so. Huh? He does not need uh, uh, archbishop so-and-so. He don't need pope so-and-so right. to define his perfection. I want you to understand that. The word of God tells us that every good and perfect gift comes from God, who is the Father of lights. Amen. And guess what he says? And there is no variable or shadow of his turn with God. In other words, he's not failing. 
Can I preach it here? Uh -huh. huh? No, we, we, we don't serve a fake God. Amen? And not only that, but he's an unchanging God. He is immutable. Amen? God is not some fickle-minded God that, that I can impress and that you can impress. There's nothing that I can do to impress God. Yeah. Amen? Uh, he is immutable. Amen? And guess what? He's always good. Yeah. I'm going to help somebody this morning because there are many people that have an issue with God. That's why they can't serve. <laughs> huh? God didn't let me have my way. Guess what? If your way is not his way, it ain't going to happen. Right. Huh? And so we might as well get that understood uh, so that you can get on with the business of serving God and acknowledging who God is. Amen? So he's always good. Amen? People, places, and things change. But God never changes. Huh? Which means I can always depend on him. I can always count on him. Huh? He's always faithful. He's always on time. He never changes. Now, uh, Jesus here said that if men desire to be perfect, they must first begin. Watch this. It's a process. They must begin to be Christ-like. If you want to be perfect, you have to start being Christ-like. That ought to be easy, you would think, for saved folks. That ought to be easy for followers of Jesus Christ. Because one of the conditions to follow him is to be Christ-like. Can I get a witness in here? Perfection should be the goal of every believer in Jesus Christ. If you're saved this morning, I want to know what is your, uh, when you're going with your salvation, amen? What is your goal of being saved? What do you hope to attain by being saved. You ought to be able to answer that this morning. What do you want from God because now you are saved? What do you expect God to do now that you are saved? What is your goal now that you're saved? That's the question that I want to leave with the congregation this morning. Uh, the moment that we become believers in Christ, the Bible says, not Pastor Harrison, but the Bible says that I become, or I, I am made righteous in God, even though I'm tore up from the floor. You better catch that. Because, see, we love to, we love to deal with feelings. How I feel. Hmm? But the Bible says the moment I accept Jesus Christ into my heart, he declares me righteous before God, even though I'm a mess. Yeah. Which means I have some work to do once I become saved. Oh. You mean to tell me that uh, I'm supposed to do something now that I'm saved? Well, you're supposed to get up off your do-nothing. Huh? Yeah. And no, you, you, you're not going to be saying, oh, I said it, you don't sit down. Yeah. No, God expects us to get up and function. Yeah. Hmm? Tell you about the young man went away to seminary, and he thought he was going to party his way through seminary and still graduate and be all that and some chips. So he would go out with the crowd, but when he came back to his dormitory, uh, he would get in the bed and put his Bible under his pillow and pray. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Lord, help me to be the best. Lord, help me to be the best preacher in the world in Jesus' name. All right. <laughs> Ain't going to happen. All Amen. Right. You got to put the work in. Amen. Amen. And so uh, uh, the moment I become a believer in Jesus Christ, I declare righteous in him. There is no difference between, or rather there is a difference between uh, being righteous and perfect. There's a difference. There's a difference. When I, the moment I accept Christ, he declares me righteous before God. Now I got to try to move towards perfection. You don't hear me yet, do you? Huh? I don't know where we get this notion that I'm saved now. All I got to do is sit down and, and breathe, take a breath of air. Oh, no, no, that's not how it works, amen? So Jesus is the perfect and righteous son of God. He came to uh, make believers in him righteous and then to show them how to be Christ-like and to move on to perfection. If you're here this morning and you know you're saved, it's time for you to move. And then keep on moving. Don't stop moving. Keep on moving. Because you're moving towards perfection. Keep moving. Amen. And don't let nothing and nobody stop you from moving. There are some people you started out with God moving. All of a sudden some stuff went on somewhere. Yeah. Somebody said something. Hmm? 
or somebody looked at you wrong, talk to me somebody, and you stopped moving. Hell, in the worst case, you left the church. All right. Yeah. Come on in here. Mm -hmm. You mean to tell me you allow someone or something to disconnect you from God? Mm -hmm. That's insanity to me. Mm -hmm. The devil in hell will never make me leave the church. All right. Ain't gonna happen. All right. Ain't gonna never happen. Matter of fact, the, the way that you can guarantee that you'll stay with the church is be born in it. Yeah. And if you're born in it, you, you won't leave it. Yeah. Huh? But if you just dipping and dotting and running in and running out, mm. huh? Satan waiting on you every time you run in, every time you run out. Yeah. Do you hear me, somebody? Mm. So believers must achieve the task, watch this, of cooperating with the indwelling Holy Spirit. How many of us are cooperating with the Spirit. How many of us are, are, are working in conjunction with and in harmony with the indwelling Holy Spirit? The moment that I become saved, the Holy Ghost comes to live on the inside of me. Yeah. I need to be cooperating with Him hmm? so that I can become more Christ-like. The Holy Ghost will make you become more Christ-like. Mm -hmm. Well, what about if I ignore Him? Yeah, well, I, I need the Holy Spirit. Talk to my head, but my head busy. Okay, no happiness. Hmm? So we must cooperate uh, with the indwelling Spirit so that we can become more Christ-like. You ought to be more Christ-like now than when you first accepted Jesus Christ. You ought to be more Christ-like now uh, than when you first went into the war. You ought to be more Christ-like now uh, 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 after you've taken, or after you've had your first communion. Uh -huh. Am I preaching here? And so we have to strive uh, to be in, the, in a right standing with God. What? I got to stop right there. What is your standing with God today? Are you in good standing with Him? Are you in fellowship with Him? What is your standing with God today? So we have to strive to be in the right standing with God and mankind. That's why the Bible said that as a believer, we could be a peacemaker. Huh? Not a peacebreaker. But a peacemaker. Yeah. Amen? And so uh, we ought to strive to uh, be in right standing with God and man. And then as we grow in, grow in grace and knowledge, we become, watch this, a work in progress. I'm, I'm, you know what? I'm so tired of those that have arrived. How do I, who told you you, you had arrived already? Who told you that? Who sold you that bad bill of goods? Mm. That you got to hold down a whole queue. That's all you're doing. Mm. You're holding it down. Right. Who, who, who told you that, that there's nothing else for you to do? Mm. I'm not understanding. So we become a work in progress. Yeah. The word perfection means to go towards a, de a definition or a definite place. That's what perfection means. I'm going somewhere. That's why Jesus said, be you perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect. Yeah. I'm going somewhere. I'm moving from one degree of grace to another degree. And I let nothing stop me or separate me. So perfection means to move towards a definite place. It implies traveling on a journey to arrive at a determined destination. If I were to take a poll today and begin to ask some questions. Do you know where you're going on this journey? Do you know where your final destination is going to be? As a believer, you ought to be able to answer every one of those in the affirmative. Amen. Jesus came into the world to establish the kingdom of God. That's why he came. As a matter of fact, the text that we're preaching from today is St. Matthew. Matthew talked about uh, Jesus as a king. Yeah. And if he's a king, you got to have a king. Yeah. Do you hear me, somebody? And so as a result of that, he came to establish the kingdom of God. He found when he came uh, that the earthly kingdom was disorganized. The earthly kingdom was uh, 
had been degraded. When Jesus came into the world, the world was a mess. This kingdom down here. And what caused it to be a mess? Sin. It was a mess. Amen? And so, when Jesus came, the Bible said that he came teaching, preaching, and healing. He was trying to begin to rebuild the kingdom, if you please. He taught that God, who is the father of everyone, who puts their trust in Christ, is in heaven. That's where we get our father, who are in heaven. Are you with me this morning? Not only that, but when Jesus came, he came uh, to organize and to restore and to uplift the king. He also came to supply the forces necessary, watch this, for the rebirthing of humanity. That's why when Jesus, when Nicodemus met Jesus at night, Jesus was his night school teacher. And what he told Nicodemus is, marvel not that I say unto thee that you must be born again. So when Jesus came, he came to rebirth humanity and to make humanity fit for the kingdom of God. You got to be fit for the kingdom. Just like Joshua, uh, we talk, we sing the song about Joshua fought the battle of Jericho. But before you talk about him fighting the battle, you better talk about him being fit for the battle. Mm. He had to be fit before he fought. Yeah. Can I preach it here? Uh -huh. And so as a believer, we've got to understand that Jesus came to fit us for the kingdom of God. You're not a Christian. You've not accepted Jesus Christ. You're not trying to function. You're not trying to work. Then you're not fit for the kingdom. Do you hear me, somebody? God never called anybody to sit down. He never saved anybody to sit down. He saved us to get up. Yeah. That's why before he got ready to go back to glory, he said, go ye therefore. Uh -huh. Do you hear me, somebody? Make some disciples, amen? Help build the kingdom of God. And that's what the church, that's why the church is still in the world today. We're in the world, we're to be kingdom builders. And I'm not talking about your house either. Now, I'm not talking about your little circle of friends. That's not your kingdom. I'm not talking about your tribe either. Uh -huh. Amen. I'm talking about building the kingdom of God. When I stop and think about it, I've got to get out of the way here. When I stop and think about the fact that God never created hell for man. Right. And so many folks going to end up there. Mm, yeah. that, that, that's just sickening for me. Mm. When, when it's a place that he created for Satan and all of his demons. Why in the world are we going to end up there? Okay. Uh, because uh, our God is perfect, uh, he desires those who believe in him through his son, Jesus Christ, to be perfect also. What brought about or what makes it possible for us to move towards perfection is the issue that God had a desire for mankind. And his desire is that mankind would not never perish, but that we would come to repentance. That we would turn around. Amen. And, and repentance is not a 360, it's a 180. Amen. That we would repent or turn around and be saved. Men perish because of the sin of unbelief. Now, Jesus did a work on Calvary. Would you agree with me this morning? Yeah. Would you agree that Jesus did a marvelous work on a hill called Calvary? Yeah. His work was so marvelous until uh, it affected all humanity. The Bible said that he did a marvelous work on the cross of Calvary, and he made it so uh, that he could bring those who believed in him into the kingdom. Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. Uh, his shedding of his blood, I don't care, yeah. was to bring every believer in him into the kingdom of God. Now, uh, because God is perfect, he desires for us to become perfect through his son, Jesus Christ. That's twofold. So first of all, we must be mature 
in our conversation and lifestyle. If you're still living the same kind of old lifestyle that you were living uh, when you first met Jesus, do you hear me, somebody? Uh, there has to be a change in your lifestyle. There's, there has to be a change in your conversation. If you're still talking the same old filth that you was talking before you got saved, or before you say you got saved, yeah. huh? So that's part of your perfection or moving towards your perfection. So your conversation or your lifestyle, and then we must be Christ-like and we must be holy. The Bible says, why? Because God is holy. Yeah. Yeah. Got a whole lot of folks in church. You you tipping around? Oh Lord, we can, you know we can't be holy. No, no. Huh? That's what them sanctified folks down there. Mm. <laughs> That's what them holy ghosts, them holy rolls down there. Yeah. I'm trying to tell you the number that we've done on ourselves. The Bible says, be holy because I'm holy. Right. Amen. And holy means to be set apart. Yeah. Amen. Sanctified, if you please. Amen. Yeah. Not only that, uh, but, but, but uh, 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 God sent Christ into the world to be our only, 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 only acceptable sacrifice. He was our only example. You don't have no other example. So guess what? If you got another example, you going by, you throw out the trash. Mm -hmm. huh? I'm following so and so. Yeah. Well, so and so can't make you holy. Right. So and so can't lead you to perfection. Yeah. So and so will lead you down to a hole somewhere. Right. Do you hear me, somebody? At some point, you got to leave so and so alone All right. hmm? and follow Christ. Yeah. So and so got some bad habits you can't shake. Do you hear me, somebody? And the only reason you follow in so-and-so because so-and-so needs some company. Don't leave you alone. Hmm? When you, when you turn off, after, you, after your visit with so-and-so, when you turn off to go to church, so-and-so go on home and go to sleep. Yeah. Uh -huh. Hmm? And we play that game over and over and over again and never really wake up to understand that so-and-so don't mean you no good. Every believer in, in God in Christ must reach complete perfection, watch this, when they enter into the heavenly kingdom of God. In the kingdom of God, there are no imperfections. You talking about you going to heaven? You better make sure you're going. Everybody, everybody talking about heaven ain't going there. Huh? And there are a whole lot of folks that want to stand, they're going to stand up before the Lord and they got a laundry list of what they did for the church. Huh? Oh, yes, Lord. Yeah, the church couldn't run without me. Yeah. Yes, Lord. I paid the most money. I had the keys. I, I had to unlock it and let them in. Let's look what I did. I, you, listen, every time they had a dinner, I had to bake all the cakes and pies. Yeah. I was the chicken fried in church. Yeah. Huh? Oh, just look what I did. All right. Faith without works is dead. Yeah. And God has a word. For everybody that's going to stand up before him and recite what you think you did. This will be his reply. Depart from me, ye worker of iniquity. I never knew you. Yeah. Why? Because when you was doing all that work, when you was doing all that huffing and puffing, huh? when you was back in the kitchen sweating bullets, huh? and ain't nobody working with you and you're doing this all by yourself, uh -huh. you weren't doing it for God, you were doing it for yourself. Because you were doing it for him, he'd have you some help. And you would be kind enough and Christ-like enough to accept from him. Can I get a witness in here? All right. He didn't ask you to do it all by yourself. Come on in here. Huh? So the issue here is that you've got to make sure you know where you're going. Amen? And so there are no imperfections in heaven because it is in the very presence of God and there is an absence of sin. There's no sin in the kingdom. Mm. Hmm? And guess what? The, the reason that you're not going to be able to get in is because you're sin laden. So every believer in God, in Christ, is a son or a daughter of God. You got to be a believer. Amen. But it does not yet appear what we shall be. You don't know what you're going to be. But the Bible gives you a description of what you shall be. It does not yet uh, appear what we shall be uh, when, when we are perfect in God. 
we will be, uh, we'll all be changed what? by the Holy Ghost of the Lord. You have to be changed. Yeah. Hmm? Watch this. When God shall appear, the Bible says that those of us who have reached perfection, we will be like him. Hmm? And the Bible says, for we shall see him as he is. And we're going to see him face to face. No man has seen him face to face except the Son yeah. and the Holy Ghost. But when we get to heaven, yeah. we're going to be able to see him face to face. But in order to get there, you have to be Christ-like. Do you hear me, somebody? Uh, not only that, but we'll see him uh, as he is. Amen? And the Bible calls him the Ancient of Days. The Bible calls him the great I am that I am. Amen. And so God does not need uh, any help because he's already perfect. I, I stopped by to ask you a question this morning, and then I'm going to take my seat. But when did God have to ask your permission to do anything? All right. If I got the record right, the, 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 the Bible said that, uh, that when God got ready uh, to uh, uh, create the world, that he spoke it into existence. He didn't look over his shoulder and ask nobody nothing. Do you hear me, somebody? And then another thing, when man got ready to, when God got ready to make man, he didn't ask nobody. Hmm? When God made everything that he made, he didn't ask nobody. Because he's God. And he's perfect. Amen. When he made man, the Bible said he just reached down and got some dirt off the ground. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Scooped it up together. Yeah. Looked back at Jesus and looked back at the Holy Ghost and said, let's make him in our likeness and in our image. Yeah. You don't hear me there, do you? Come on. So you, 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 have you ever wondered why you're not traveling around on the ground like I am with somebody? He said, let's make him in our likeness and in our image. And I can see God putting me on that. And began to just break up some dirt together. And a whole lot of people uh, have some issues with God because they want to understand whether or not God is white or black. I'm going to ask you a question for you today. But God reached down and, and as he began to screw up some dirt, some of the dirt were red dirt. And then some more dirt was white dirt. All right. And then some more dirt was brown dirt. Yeah, right. And then some more dirt was black dirt. Yeah. But he just kept on shaking the dirt. He kept on shaking the head of the dirt. He kept on shaking the arms of the dirt. He kept on shaking the legs of the dirt and the body of the dirt. Right. But it still was nothing but dirt. Yeah. God looked at him and said, mm, that's about what I want. Mm. And then he knelt down again and he Blew his breath yeah. in man's nostrils. Yeah. And all of a sudden, when he blew his breath in man's nostrils, man began to wiggle around. Yeah. Heart stopped beating. Yeah. <laughs> you don't hear me, do you? Heart stopped going. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you that God is perfect. Yeah. And he does not need my help. He does not need your help. And so when Jesus said, be ye also perfect as my Father in heaven is perfect, he came to make you perfect. He came to take away the sting of death. He also came to take away the sting. Don't you know sin got a stain? Yeah. I see folks washing all the time. Huh? Oh, yes, I got to go. I got to take my suit to the cleaners. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got to go. I've been trying to get this stain. I tell you, sin leaves a stain, saints. Yeah. And the only thing that can wash away the stain is the blood of Jesus Christ. Yeah. And so the issue here is how in the world am I going to be made perfect? I'm going to be made perfect in Jesus Christ and you'll never be perfect down here. But when your foot strikes out, <laughs> do you hear me somebody? Yeah. When, you, when you get to the city with 12 gates, yeah. You don't hear me, do you? When you get to the city whose streets are paved with gold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you don't hear me, do you? Uh, when you? When you get to the city, you'll be able to be made perfect. And the only somebody that will be able to go in the city are those who have been made perfect through the blood of the Lamb. 
And so what I'm trying to tell you is that God dwells in a perfect place because he's a perfect God. Amen? And so in my conclusion here, it is a place where all things have been made new. Your old old arm back back, 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 back ways won't make it in heaven. Your old bad attitude won't make it in heaven. The fact that you can't love everybody will keep you out of heaven. I'm going to help you in a minute. Huh? Uh, the, 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 the fact that uh, you think that you're running it on your own will keep you out of heaven. Pride will keep you out of heaven, saints. And so the issue here is that in heaven, all things have been made new. It's a place where we become complete and perfect. We'll be the perfect sons and the perfect daughters of God. Amen? And then the Bible says we will dwell in the kingdom of God. Watch this. Where there will not be a need for the sun by day or the moon by night. Not only that, but due energy won't be needed in heaven. Because the Bible said God will be the light of the city. Yeah. Do you hear me, somebody? Then not only that, the kingdom is uh, the kingdom of God is a perfect place because our God is perfect. Believers shall finally be perfect and dwell there. How long? Forever and ever and ever. And ever. Yeah. And guess what? You won't have to worry about your enemies because they won't be there. You don't hear me yet. You won't have to worry about trying to pay a car note. You won't have to worry about trying to pay a house note. <laughs> then you won't have to worry about trying to keep up with your utilities <laughs> because you won't need any of that there. All heaven is all sufficient. Because it's a perfect place. And we have a perfect God. There God will supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory. I'm going to leave you alone. Hold on, folks dying need. you got to hop along. Huh? you got to have folks to pick you up. you got to have folks to drop you off. But when your foot strikes out, that hop that you had, God will take the hop away. That limp that you had, God is going to take the limp away. Because we're going to all be made brand new. In the twinkle of an eye. And, I, and then I'm going to deal with some more folks because we got some more people that can't go too far because the blood pressure go up. You don't hear me, do you? You don't have to worry about high blood pressure when you get to heaven. You won't have to worry about sugar diabetes when you get to heaven. We'll all be made new. And then another thing about heaven, it's a perfect place. You won't have to worry about crying. You don't hear me at the end. Down here, you got to cry sometimes. You don't hear me at the end. And then down here, you got to suffer sometimes. But when we get to heaven, when we get to that perfect place, when we reach perfection in God, the Bible said God, he will wipe away every tear from your eye. You don't hear me? And then in heaven, there will be no more sickness in heaven. And every day, I'm just talking about a perfect God. The door is open. The door is open. 